Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us for Bible study today. And we are going to look at the Thanksgiving theme of our study time today, and that is Psalm 100. If ever there was a psalm that would help us to think about being thankful to God, it would be Psalm 100, a little short five-verse uh, psalm. But there are many other psalms, Psalm 103, um, and we can name several others. Uh, the latter part of the Psalms from Psalm 146, 47 to 150 all have to do with praise the Lord. Everything's praise the Lord. And that's what praise, that's what Thanksgiving means is to be thankful to God. So I'm going to um, give you a four point outline here. First, be open to God's, to the goodness of God. We, uh, the object of our thanks is, of course, God himself. Secondly, focus on what really matters. We don't always focus on what really matters. We have other things on our mind of what we want to see happen in our lives. Thirdly, remember your, where your help comes from. Psalm 121 says, My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. We need to remember where that help comes from. And fourthly, be willing to take time to say thank you. When do we say thank you? Some people don't say thank. Um, the, um, Jesus talking about the, uh, the healed the lepers, ten lepers. And they all left. Only one came back to thank Jesus. I read a story, um, in the, I think I, it was in this. There was a ship that went down in Lake Michigan many years ago with 300 and some people on it. And this young man who was an excellent swimmer went out in the cold water. He rescued 17 people. And as a result of being in that water, he was crippled for the rest of his life. And in his, in his reply about the story, he said, not one came back to say thank you. All the rest of those people died except for 17 people that he rescued. They didn't come back to say thank you. So we need to be willing to take time to say thank you to God. So uh, we'll jump right in here. Um, in Psalm 100, the congregation is urged to give thanks, to give praise, joyful praise, thanksgiving, uh, the gift of life, God's tender care, God's goodness to us, God's love, and God's faithfulness. All those things God has given to us. So we should be willing to thank Him for what He has done and continues to do. So that characterization uh, puts us in right relationship with the Lord. So let's read verses 1 and 2. We can almost say this from memory. Um, the, the King James verse says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Uh, the NIV, which I have here, says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. So we are, we are called, we are challenged to rally forward to God and say, Hey, God, thank you. Let's make a joyful noise, a joyful, a great joy that the worshipers assemble. And of course, we know the Psalms were, was the hymn book of the Hebrews back in the temple days, way back. So that would be their songs, their hymns, as they would sing praises to God. So come, bring joyful voices, make a joyful noise into the Lord, or joyful with great joy. Be united and sing praises to the Lord. Shout for joy, either with uh, voices or with instruments, or both. As we know throughout the history of the Old Testament, uh, they used both. They would uh, sing joyful, joyfully with their voices. They would play the instrument and give praise to God. Uh, Israel's neighbors those around Israel at that point in time, they had, their, they had their gods, and they in turn, though, spoke of Israel's gods. And so this is an open invitation to all people, not just the people of Israel. All people shout for joy. All people praise the Lord. God wasn't a regional God like these other nations' gods were at that time. Uh, every little nation had their own gods. God is not a regional. He's an eternal all, all, all around, from everywhere, from all corners of the earth, there is God. So he is the God, the Lord God of all nations in the world. For all people were his creation, because God created us. Therefore, the call to worship was not restricted just to Israel. 
the appeal was to all nations. All nations shout for joy to the Lord for who he is. So worship him in joy and gladness. That's the last uh, imperative. The imperative is come before him. Hey, this is not a think about it or maybe you want to do it. Maybe you'll get around to it. It's come before him right now with shouts of joy to the Lord for who he is. Come before his face to see the Lord in a spiritual sense. So it's, a, it's an imperative. Come before him. It's not a option. Hey, if you want to, if you think about it, if you want to give joyful thanks to the Lord, get around to it sometime. It's now. Come before him. So this week, as we think about Thanksgiving, we come before him. Today, we come before him in worship and in praise uh, with joyful songs in their hearts and on their lips. Let's sing joyful praises. They wanted to leave, <clears throat> they wanted to leave their sorrows behind. There are some sorrows in life. We all would attest to that. Um, we want to put all that behind us. Uh, life is a challenge any way we live it, whether it's really good or really not so good. Uh, there's, there's struggles to it. There's challenges to it. So they were invited to leave all these sorrows and difficulties behind for a moment as we worship and pray praise to God. That's the, what we do as we come to worship. Put all that behind us. Don't think about what yesterday was or what yesterday brought. Don't think about what tomorrow is going to bring. Think about today. Let's worship and praise the Lord. So the recognition of the Lord is God, the fullness of joy. Within us, our deepest gratitude for his blessings should be on our lips and should generate an appropriate response. So we are to respond to God. Look what he's done for us. said, uh, come before him with joyful singing. Um, he is, and we'll see in verse 3, why he is to be praised and uh, offered up thanks and worship as we go before him. Uh, so in verse 3, it says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So verses 1 and 2 were, was, were an initial call to praise, joyful praise, to thanks to God. And joyful worship. Verse 3 includes the actual expression of praise and why we are to praise the Lord God. Why we're to praise and worship Him. First of all, He's a living reality. God is a living reality, a being who watches over us and has watched over us all of our lives, who provided His Son Jesus to come to earth and die for us that we might be free from the penalty of sin and know Him in a personal way. Uh, remember the confessional of, uh, in Deuteronomy 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, the Lord is one. That was their confessional uh, when they went into the promised land that God led them. So the Lord is one. He is a sovereign. I like the word sovereign. God is a sovereign Lord, sovereign over all things. He created the heavens and the earth. He sustains the heavens and the earth. He controls everything. It's all in His hands. We are in the hands of God. And we live and move because of what God has done for us and through us. He gave us life, the gift of life. He sustains us throughout life. Then He's there to provide a place for eternity that Jesus has prepared for us. So all of our loyalty is due Him. We don't change loyalties among gods. We are loyal only to God. And uh, Moses, through the law, and God had to remind the people, hey, I am the Lord your God. There are no other gods. So don't even think about how many gods before me. But they didn't always pay attention to that. They brought in other gods and intermingled with the worship of other gods. So they didn't obey God. But God says, I am, as he says in the, ex in the ten, I am a jealous God. I don't want any gods before me. Don't you put anybody before me, above me, or anywhere around me. I am the God. So hear, O Israel, the Lord, the Lord our God is one. He is only one. He is over all. So the recognition of, of God is very important. All loyalty. Know by your experience with him that the Lord is God. So we don't have to just read about that in the Bible. We know from, from experience, our experience with God, that he is real that he is the Lord, 
that He is there for us. He made us. He created us. He gave us life. The people were to worship the Lord God because He was the Creator. So we worship God. God, you created everything. It's all because of you, because of your great love and your grace that you reached out to us. As Romans 5 eight says, in that we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So even though we were sinners, God loved us enough to send his son to the world to die for us. So the one upon whom they were to depend, they were to turn to for help. So who do you turn to when you need help? We turn to God. We need his grace. We need his deliverance. We need his um, care and concern. We need his, um, um, well, we'll look at a word for that in a little bit. The word case said, loving kindness, grace, the mercy of God. God was merciful to us. And so we are grateful for that. To acknowledge the Lord God as creator is to acknowledge his pre-existence before Time began. Before anything began, there was God. Scripture says, in the beginning was God. He was there from the very beginning, whenever that beginning uh, came into existence. Uh, we don't know exactly. There are theories on, hey, the earth is X number of years old, or the earth is uh, many more years older than that. Uh, some people go back to the, um, trace back to um, the beginning of the New Testament, I mean, Old Testament. But before that, God, there was God. Before that, there was some of the creation. I remember some fella um, used to be here at Delta State and taught. Uh, he um, lives in another city. And uh, he uh, wrote a book on how old the world is, how long it's been in existence. He went way back to the old, way back. And his pastor read the book. <laughs> he didn't agree with him on that. <laughs> so, so they had a little disagreement over, hey, how old is this earth? How old is this creation that God has made? So the Lord is to be worshipped, is to be worshipped also, not only because of his power, might, and majesty, because he is a gentle shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, shall not want. So God... God, we can't just put God in one little category. He's the all-powerful God creator. He's also the Jesus, the gentle shepherd, the one who cares for us, the one who loved us, who reaches out to us uh, to call us to become a part of his family and to be a part of his kingdom. So Jesus identified himself as the good shepherd in John chapter 10, describing his special relationship to his followers, and uh, we're grateful for that. So we need someone. We wander aimlessly as human beings. We wander aimlessly the earth. So we need someone as a shepherd, as we compare ourselves to sheep. We need someone to lead us and to keep us out of danger and to provide um, protection for us. And of course, that one is the Lord God. Uh, he has the power of the creator, but the love and tenderness of the shepherd. That is Jesus to say. He has, the certain, he has the powers that God had as the creator. But he also has the love and tenderness of the, of the shepherd. So we are in all of him. We stand in all. When we come to the presence of a holy God, we are in all. Uh, the Old Testament talks about we're, we're, we're afraid. Uh, the word all, afraid. No, we're not afraid of what God might do to us. We are in awe of a holy God as was Isaiah in chapter 6 of Isaiah. So the uh, psalm extends yet uh, another exhortation, invitation to worship all the power and all, and all uh, loving God. So he is a powerful God, but he's a loving God. He's a shepherd. He cares for us. He reaches out to us in all that he has. So we are to come before him. Know that the Lord is God. It is he has made us, and we are his. We are the people, the sheep of his pasture. Then we get to verses 4 and four and 5 as he talks about what we do. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. 
God has always been faithful. He will always be faithful. There will not be a moment, uh, one, one second, when God will not be faithful to his people. So we can count, we can trust that God will be faithful for, to us for all of our lives. So give thanks to him and praise his name for who he is and what he does and what he continues to do in our lives. Well, when it starts off with verse 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving. In the temple, there were uh, gates within other, some in, more entered, more than one entrance into the temple, is what I'm trying to say. And in the temple complex, there were different courts within that complex. And those courts were for different purposes. There was a court for the, the men, there were a court for the women, there were a court for uh, Gentiles to come in, and they were only permitted in a certain area. Uh, there was an area for the priest, and of course the holy, holy place, and then the holy of holies, which only the high priest went into. So the idea here is the invitation, enter his courts, whether you come in this gate or that gate, or which court you go in, come into the court with praise. Enter his courts with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Uh, so that's the picture we have here of people entering into the temple uh, to go into these different areas. Uh, there was a court of the Nazarites and, of course, probably many others that we don't know about as such. Uh, so this procession, this was a worship procession. Uh, the Jewish people were, they were uh, big on parades. <laughs> so here's a parade, all the people going into the courts. You go back to the Old Testament when they were rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, when they finished and completed the walls, um, Ezra and Nehemiah, whichever one it was, uh, they had choirs of people up on the walls over the gates. And they, of course, had a worship service and they sang and um, worshiped God. So they liked processions as such. Um, they had a procession on Palm Sunday. Uh, and that's when Jesus came riding into Jerusalem uh, to the accolades of the people who were worshiping him. So entering the temple symbolized for these people who entered in the um, coming into the Lord's presence. So we're going into the Lord's presence. Um, we don't so much do that. I mean, when we go into a worship service, we're visiting and talking to folks and so forth. We're not into a mode of worship as we walk in. And of course, we're not singing as we go in. We sing as we start the service. So this was a time of, of coming and symbolizing we're coming into the presence of the living God. Here he is right here in this temple. We're coming to worship him and offer up our praises to him. And so as they entered, they made noise. That's what we do. We make noise. <laughs> as they make noise and praise and come, come into the presence uh, with singing to the Lord. So give, to give thanks is to acknowledge God for who he is and what he has done for us and through us. So uh, when we bless others, we can bless others too. That means we're humbling ourselves before the Lord on their behalf and asking for good favor on them. So when we bless the Lord, we're humbling ourselves before him to extol his goodness and his grace and his good favor towards us. So... The things that three attributes of God that characterize the ways in which he relates to his people is his goodness, his tenderness, tender care, and his faithfulness. And we read in verse 5, for the Lord is good. I think we would all agree that the Lord is good. He is good, gracious God to us. He is good. Um, the goodness of God is beyond question. There's no question the goodness of God. When we think of anything good or perfect, we think of God. He is good, a good God uh, before us. Um, and that can translate to his righteousness, to, to his uh, beauty, to his moral uprightness, whatever characteristic we want to give to that word to describe his goodness towards us. And he, because he is good, his actions in relationship reaches out to us as his people as we seek to worship him and serve him. Secondly, his mercy is everlasting. Um, I think probably most every prayer we pray, God, thank you for your mercy and your grace. If it were not for either one of those, 
we wouldn't be here. God's grace, as I said, even we were sinners, sinful people. Grace, God reached out to us to give us the gift of his son. But mercy, as he reaches out to us, uh, different meanings in different translations. Loving kindness is one. Uh, love, as we see here in NIV. And steadfast love, that defines it even more. God's steadfast love. It means it's always there, always present. We're always recipients of his steadfast, steadfast love as we enjoy that. Um, it endures forever. It's not, it knows no end. There's no short supply of God's love. There's enough love that comes from God to cover all people who on the face of the earth. God's love can reach out to everybody. So it lasts uh, forever and ever. It knows no ends and there's no short supply. There will not be a, there will not be an interruption because of uh, what do we have today? We can't get supplies, can't get stuff, can't get the tanks, the containers in to get the goods to the stores. God's love is not a short supply. There's plenty of God's love there for all of us. And lastly, His faithfulness continues to all generation. And of course, that means faithful. God is faithful. Faithful as an attribute of God. His his, his faithfulness can be counted on by all people, everybody, not just now and then, not just now or then, but through all generations, forever and forever. God's love began with the beginning when he created people. People walked this earth. God's faithfulness to them and to us is always there and will always be there as long as this earth remains intact till Christ comes again. At all times, all times, and through all the ages, we can count on God to be there for us. So his constant, constant, constant goodness and his gracious mercy and his one, unwavering faithfulness to all of us are the source of unending joy for all of us and gladness for all who follow and worship him. So we're grateful for the love of God. We're grateful for things that we are thankful for. Uh, today and each day. So I'll go back to the beginning point of what I said. Uh, I, I'm doing a sermon this morning out Lynn on Thanksgiving, the, uh, the, uh, the secret to Thanksgiving. And one is that we, um, uh, we want things and more things. It says uh, uh, somebody wants an expensive pair of shoes until they see somebody with no shoes. Uh, they want to get into a prestigious university until they see a parent with a child that has special needs. And so we, we want, we want, we want, we, we, we can't find a place where we can be satisfied with what we have. Whatever we have, we should be thankful to God and satisfied with it. So be open to the goodness of God. Be open. God, you are good. You are eternal. You have always been good. You've always loved us. You've always cared for us. So be open to that goodness and focus on what really matters. We don't have to have the most expensive pair of shoes, or the most expensive this, that, or whatever we want to make a comparison of. We are to be thankful for what we do have and what God has given to us. Uh, thirdly, remember where your help comes from. Where does our help come from? Psalm 121 comes from God the maker of heaven and earth. He created everything. And be willing to take time to say thank you. Don't just tip your hat and pass on through. Take time to be thankful. Um, I just thought of a movie, an um, old movie that has to do, oh, it's a Jimmy Stewart movie. And anyway, this is this conglomeration of people live, live in this old house and uh, some are family and some are boarders and it's just a conglomeration of people. But the old dad, he sat down at the table to pray and he said, uh, if I can just think now, this off the top of my head. He said, Lord, uh, we're here. Uh, and he went through the litany. He said, we're, we're glad that so-and-so you know, has got a job. We're glad that this is happening. We're glad that this couple's going to get married. Um, and he ends it up by saying, well, Lord, 
Um, that's just all we can say, all we can ask. We thank you for what you provided. Thank you. So he was just grateful for what they had in that family group and what God had provided for them. He said, that's all, Lord. Don't ask for any more. That's all we need from you. So that's all we could say. Hey, we're grateful, God. Some of us may have a lot. God's provided us and blessed us a lot. Some may not have as much. God provides for us in the way that he wants to provide for us. Um, I always uh, feel sorry for these people who win the lottery and win millions of dollars. What do they do with it? Some of it ruins them. It ruins their life. It just, it's, it's over. Anyway, we, we can't handle. God gives us what we can handle, take care of. Um, we, he gives us enough to say grace over. We don't need to have any more to be in charge of because we'd mess up the deal. So God knows what he's doing. So we're grateful. So let's be grateful this week. It may be a quiet event around your house, um, but let it be a day of thanksgiving. In fact, let every day be a day of thanksgiving. Hey, Lord, I'm grateful today. First of all, that I was able to get up this morning, <laughs> that I can move around, <laughs> that I have some food to eat today. Little things that we take for granted. Be thankful to God for what he does. Not just Thanksgiving Day, but every day. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to stay tuned to worship service, which is coming up in just a few minutes. And we hope to see you back with us again next Sunday. Let's pray. Father, for this day, we are thankful. For everything, we are thankful. For who you are and what you've done, we are thankful. For sending your son Jesus, we are thankful. For the hope and promise of eternal life in a place prepared by him, we are thankful. So, Lord, we could enumerate on and on and on that we are thankful and help us to take time to reflect how thankful we really are. Thank you for your guidance and direction in our lives. Would you guide us this week? Keep us safe in your care and help us to honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.